Hello, wonderful teachers. Good evening. Welcome once again to the Martina Teacher of the Year Inspired Series. Um, it's a very bright day, and we are excited to join you today to discuss what and how to apply for the 2022 Martina Teacher of the Year. But before I continue, I would quickly like to acknowledge with me in the house um, on this call to make the presentation our 2016 Martina Teacher of the Year winner, Mr. Imo Essen. Mr. Imo, please say hello to our guest uh, on the call. Hello, Nigerians, and hello to everyone, teachers. It's glad to be here once again. You know, welcome to this session today. And I, I just wish that it's going to be a wonderful session as we're going to have. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Imo. Um, he is a very, very inspiring teacher. I'm sure he's going to share much about himself on the call as he takes us through the topic for today's session. Um, the topic is, uh, well, before I go into the topic, actually, let me speak about what the session is about. Um, the Montana Teacher of the Year Inspired Series is a brainchild of the organizers of the Montana Teacher of the Year. And it comes to you at home as a session that encourages uh, teachers, uh, listeners to inform all teachers on how to apply for the 2022 edition of the Martina Teacher of the Year. Um, we have champions from all the editions that have gone ahead. Um, come on air and tell us, take sections of the form, explain to our teachers at home how they can easily complete this form to participate and become or stand a chance to become the Montana Teacher of the Year for this year. And if you are wondering what is Montana Teacher of the Year, Montana Teacher of the Year in itself is a brainchild of the Nigerian Bureau's Felix Ohiwere Education Trust Fund. It's a fund that was set aside by the, the Nigerian Bureau's company um, in 2015 to contribute to the development of education in Nigeria. And the fund in itself has made an immense impact over the years. We've encouraged, we've been able to encourage, um, train and counsel students up to 3,200 students. We've also built through this fund, um, 417 various schools, um, renovated schools, classrooms, uh, and the rest, um, just from a takeoff grant of 100 million naira. And today, the fund has made so much contribution. The fund has also, over the years, instituted the Montana Teacher of the Year Initiative, which is a competition for teachers in secondary school pan Nigeria to participate and stand the chance to become the Montana Teacher of the Year. Um, we've recognized so far 181 teachers pan Nigeria and seven outstanding national champions. Um, I believe at this point, we should be giving a round of applause for the Montana Teacher of the Year Initiative. And with me in the house, I have, like I said earlier, Mr. Imun Essen, who is the 2016 Montana Teacher of the Year. And like I said, he's going to be taking us on the topic, how to select appropriate teaching methods and strategies. Um, for your entry. Um, I would pass the book now to Mr. Essien, who will be sharing his screen and taking us through this briefly. Okay. Uh, good evening, teachers. My name is Imo Essien. I am the 2016 Multina Teacher of the Year. At this point, I will be taking us on this. Um, first of all, before I take on the topic, the take on the topic selection of uh, methods for teaching uh, in our classrooms, I like to first of all wish that all of us who are here to get on to the Montana Teacher of the Year and set, uh, sign up and be part of this program. But before then, if you have not, if you have not done that, you've not had an opportunity of doing that, get back to where you are supposed to be, then choose and select to be one of the multi of the year. 2016, when I went, joined the course, 
excuse me, I'm off. 2016, when I joined the course, I saw the multilateral of the year, and I quickly filled the form, and God willing, I was able to win the multilateral of the year. Hello, Mr. Adelaide. Yes, I am with you. Um, I think you are facing some difficulty sharing your screen. It's yes, not showing the presentation. Okay, so I think I'm back now. I'm back now. Okay, are we there? Mr. Delay? Yes, it's showing now, please. Okay. Um, before I continue, I had said earlier on, if you've not signed up for the multi of the year 2022, that you better get back to multi teacher of the year and sign up to become one of the best teachers in Nigeria. 2016, I had the opportunity of a one of, of, of a lifetime when I saw the multi teacher of the year, I quickly picked up the form. It was easier to feel. And I think I can still say that it's still gonna be easier to feel it this year. I feel that um, one time I was able to win the competition and having won the competition, as a teacher, or as a teacher to see as a happy world here on earth, even before we get to heaven and get the normal one that we always as teachers. So now my life has not been the same. My classroom experiences have not been the same. My teaching strategies, my methods, my applications have never been the same because I now look at myself as one exceptional teacher. As an exceptional teacher, I'm also doing the best I can to not motivate other teachers only, motivate my students to excellence, motivate my other colleagues to excellence. And that has been one of the reasons why we have been able to pull through and also produce one of the, uh, some of the best students there is that ever will be in our generation. So I want to first of all congratulate Mountain Teacher of the Nigerian Brewers for this initiative, which has become a pathway for the successes that teachers have recorded in our classrooms and in our generation. Let me get back to my, my, my topic, how to select appropriate teaching methods and strategies. First of all, let me let me say this. What is what is a teaching method? The term teaching method is it could be referred to as the general principles, the pedagogy, and the management strategies that a teacher will use in giving instructions in class. What are the principles that you use? What are the strategies you use to be able to make sure that your lesson, your teaching is effective? That is what we are referring to as teaching methods, my definition. So, and it, it has to be it, it has to be a combination of strategies, a combination of principles that a teacher uses in teaching, in making sure that the learning takes place. And what do we say is learning? Learning is when there's a change in behavior as a result of the lesson that has been delivered. And just like we say that production is never complete until the good so produced gets to the final consumers. If the lesson is being taught and there is no change in the behavior, the expected behavior, which is the part of the objective of the lesson, then we would say that the essence, the purpose of the lesson was never achieved. And so we say that your choice of a teaching method is dependent on what fits you. As a teacher, what fits you? As a teacher, what do you do? As a teacher, what are the things that makes you to effectively give out your lesson? How do you do that? What fits you is a thing that determines your teaching method, inclusive of your educational philosophy, inclusive of your classroom demography, and inclusive of a subject area and the school mission statement. I would, I, I particularly have to do the school mission statement because like a school I teach, special education center for exceptional children, you know, you, we have our philosophy and we have our missions and we have our goal. 
Everything about us is centered on individualized education program. And that has been the bedrock, bedrock of what we do as teachers in the school, trying to make sure that education is given in an inclusive, an inclusive setup using the individualized method to be able to do that. But that doesn't mean that that is the only method that's being used. As a teacher, we use a combination of teaching, but we must try to be able to carry the needs of all students along in the course of the lesson. Now, these strategies that these strategies or methods that you're using in the course of the lesson is dependent on a number of factors, and these factors are the ones that I've lined, I've lined out. One of the sort. What is your subject matter? What is your lesson? What is what you have in mind? That is one of the factors that determines what your what your method is going to be. And two, it also dependent on the learner. When I talked about learner, when I want to look at this learner, I look at the learner in terms of some factors. One, what kind of learner are you having? Is it a normal learner or they are? normal learner, who are they abnormal and use the word disabled. Now, for every lesson, I'm a special teacher. In, by, by the definition of World Health Organization of who a health person is, World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, social, emotional, and social well-being of a person, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Now, if we look at this, that you see now that there will be no health Person because if you're healthy physically, you might be sick socially, you might be sick emotionally, you might have one five psychological problems or the other. So it means that at any point in time that you have one deficiency at one level or the other, then your health is not complete. Looking by the definition of what organization. Now, no normal person is disabled in one way or the other. We are wearing glasses, you have low vision. We have people with speech and hearing impairment. We have people with visual impairment. We have people with intellectual disability. We have people with learning disability. We have people of, with physical disability or people with diverse or categories of disability. So there's no normal person. So if I want to use the word normal, I would use it in quotes. And then I will say that if you're going to determine the method, you'll be able to know what kind of lesson, what kind of learners do you have in the class? What kind of learners? Is it a so-called normal or is it a disabled? Because you should be able to use the methods that would be okay for the learner, the methods that the learners would understand, the learners, the, the method that would be that fits the kind of learners you have. For example, I teach a special class, I do class that I have a combination of people with visual impairments, combination of persons with um, speech and hearing impairments, as well as others. With intellectual disability. So you must be able to have a method that will be able to carry all categories of students along in your classroom. Now, so having looked at that, so you'll be able to know what kind of learners are you going to teach. This is also going to be a factor that determines the kind of method that you're going to choose for the lesson. And then you're also going to look at the level of the learner. Looking at the level of the learner has to do with the class. What class is the learner or are you teaching? Is it a JS1? Is it a JS2 or JS3? SS1, SS2, LS, SS3? Or are you teaching them ECC? I'm talking about, I'm talking to all the teachers all over. You are teaching the ECC, considering their ages. Are you teaching the primary? Are you teaching the secondary? Are you teaching the tertiary? Now, also looking at the learner in, in term, the, uh, the learner, you also look at the ability of the learner because not every student in the class have the same ability in terms of learning. So you cannot expect, okay, if you teach a particular lesson and then you give an evaluation, whether summative or formative as the case might be, and then you discover that one child has 100% and then the other one has 20%, that means that you will say a number of factors may be responsible for those two results. All the way a situation where I have one has 80% and one has 25%, there's something wrong that you could look at those, those two results. So you now see that when you want to get a method, get a method that will be able to bring you, bring at least in the course of the lesson or in the, in the end of the lesson, there should be, what we always say about 75% or 95% of the students should be able to get the objectives of the lesson achieved. So you should be able to have the ability of the learner also in mind so that you can be able to progress along with the learner 
in the course of the lesson. Now, we also look at, you, I talked about earlier about the primary, the secondary, thinking about the grades of the child, grades in terms of ages, grades in terms of what they have. So these are some of the factors that you need to also consider because this, the, these factors determines what kind of method you are going to use. Then the thing has to do with subject also. The topic, the method you're using when you're teaching mathematics is not going to be the same as the method you're using for creative arts or the method they're going to use for, math, for, for music or the method they're going to use when you're doing integrated technology, basic technology or when you're teaching um, English language. The methods can never be the same. So the subject is also a determinant of one of the, of the factors or the, the method that you're going to select for the lesson. And then you also look at the lesson under consideration itself. So what kind of lesson are you, do you have? What is the topic of your concept of your of, of the day? The topic is also one thing that you're going to determine. For example, in basic sciences, if you're taking on uh, the solar system. It's going to be a different method when you are taking on another topic, maybe like reproduction system, maybe like um, reproductive system, or maybe you're looking at uh, the, the um, stages of matter. You, you're going to see, or matter as a topic, you're going to see that these topics are going to be different. These uh, the thoughts you're using for this lesson are going to be different. So the, the lesson on that consideration is one of the factors that you need to consider in the course of the uh, selecting of the uh, topic, the methods you're going to use in teaching. Then I, I have earlier talked about the age of the learner when I was talking about the learner itself. Now I want to try. I want to try and clarify something because in the course of my speech, I have talked about a few things. I try to say that um, this. I try to use some words interchangeably. I try to use teaching styles. I also try to use methods. I now when I. Well, let me just try to clear a little A on this. Teaching methods, when you're talking about, when you're talking about teaching methods, it depends on the preference of the teacher and the needs of the students and the subject matter, the ages and other factors which I consider, the level of the learner, the nature of the learner, the subject, the lesson on that consideration, and um, the subject matter. Those are some of the things when you're talking about teaching methods, it depends on those things. But when we talk about teaching styles, teaching styles is the way in which a teacher manage the class, manage their class in terms of lesson and country and, 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 and content delivery. So when you're looking at teaching styles, how you are able to manage your classroom to be able to deliver the content of the lesson is one of the things we look at as teaching style which is different from teaching methods. Teaching methods are typically general, in more general in nature, while teaching strategies are specific. And now we give an example. For example, a teaching method might be a lecturing method, could use a lecturing method, a demonstration or something. While if you are looking at a style, it could be the application of visual ads to help students to learn better the application of visual ads or audiovisuals or of visuals. This materials that you use enable you to be able to make sure that your lesson is achieved. And then you, I, I give it an example. Teaching methods are usually used intentionally. So for example, if I'm coming to the class, I have a method that I want to be able to teach this topic. I'm coming already, I have in mind, I'm going to use demonstration method or group method, or I'm going to use lecture method, or I'm going to use uh, uh, this kind of method. Already I have that in mind, and as I'm coming to class, this is a method that I'm going to be able to use to be able to execute my lesson. I'm going to use demonstration or partly group demonstration and generalized method, or this is what I'm going to do. I have this in, already in mind, what I am coming to do. But when it comes to studying strategies, it doesn't, it's not a pre-planned thing. Studying strategies often happens unintentionally. You, you don't have that intention. In the course of the lesson, maybe of, as of teaching, something happens and then you change the style to be able to meet with the needs of that particular uh, child at that point. So what are the components of a teaching method? 
as to, you're going to select the teaching method. What are the components of that teaching method? Earlier on, I said by definition that teaching methods are those various strategies and techniques that the teacher uses to impart information and instructions to the students. That's the definition. That's what we're using as a definition as in the course of the lesson. That these are various strategies and techniques that the teacher uses to be able to deliver or instructions to the students. Now, teaching methods can be broken down into four components. Teaching methods can be broken down into four components. And these four components that we can break down this less teaching methods are the content, the context, the delivery, and the assessment. For every teaching method you're going to use, we have this. The content, the content so talked about is in terms of the specific subject matter. What is the specific subject matter? That must this is the content must be relevant to the subject matter that you're going to consider. What is the content of the lesson? It must be re relevant to that. So you are choosing a particular teaching method. You must be able to consider what will this teaching method do in terms of the objective, in terms of the subject matter that I'm considering. And you're looking at the context. It should fit with the overall uh, curriculum and appropriate for each group of the students being taught. You should look at what is this in terms of the context, what is, what, how does it fit? What is, does it meet with the curriculum? This method that I'm gonna use, is it okay for the student of that age group? What am I going to use? What am I gonna do to make sure that the content shift? Then you look at, in terms of delivery, it should be engaging in every way, for if easy for the students to understand. So, if you're looking at us, the, 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 the method that you're going to should be engage the students. So we, we should, shouldn't be just a teacher center anyway, but I'm, in the course of the lesson, I'm going to look at that. In the course of the lesson, I'm going to look at that. That are some 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 methods that are some methods that are teacher centered, some methods that are, are student centered. So when you are choosing a method, it should be such that we'll be able to engage the students in the course of the lesson. And finally, you look at the assessment, which is the most important part of this, because it measures whether the students have learned something or whether they learn what they're supposed to learn or whether there's need for them to progress or there's need for them to improve or there's need for them to be re-evaluated or whether there's need for them for you to now have specific time with them. That is to say, if at the, in the course of the evaluation, maybe you're doing a formative evaluation and then you now realize Realize that not all the students were able to go along with you. You now it will now give an opportunity for you to say, okay, do I have an individualized opportunity with each of them? Do I call them one by one, or do I look at them in groups, or do I read, do another assessment, or do another class work, or do I get me to apply another source, another thing to be able to make sure that they are they, they go along with me? So in the course of the lesson, the function of the, the evaluation is going to be able to tell you which direction you are supposed to go next. Now, classification of teaching methods. I, I like this very well. So when you're looking at teaching methods, we have two, we have two types of them. You will classify them in terms of oral, uh, non-oral. Oral teaching methods are those ones that involve the presentation of information using verbal communication means. Which just for, for example, what I'm doing right now, I'm using a verbal method because I'm, I'm using oral method. I'm, 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 I'm trying to speak to everybody. I'm using oral sound is here being delivered. So all method has to do with use of verbal means of communication to deliver on the lesson. While the non-oral methods are the non-verbal method, let me use the word like that, because it involves delivering information using instructions and other means such as true demonstrations, true drawings, true charts, and other things. Things that doesn't have sound, things that doesn't have sound, or methods that doesn't have sound of a teacher. So, oral method and the non oral method. And then, if you're taking pupils or students, like um, students with, uh, with um, hearing impairments, it's not just going to be oral because children, students with hearing impairments are not going to be able to hear. It doesn't, they're not going to hear. So, oral method won't work for them. How would they understand if a teacher comes to class and starts teaching? 
and in the course of the lesson, the teacher keeps talking, and they hear the ah, they do not understand. They can hear the teacher. That means oral nature, oral method may not really work. And then we also have the, the non-verbal, the non-oral, and that is, for example, the application of charts, the application of uh, demonstrations, drawings, which could sometimes could be um, uh, attracted to the students for them to be able to go along with you. Now, in this case, I was trying to look at how can the oral work for children, uh, students who have a speech and hearing impairment or out of hearing or um, speech impairment or the children with autism in class? How can oral work for them? Oral method can also work with children with low vision or visual impairment because they can hear but in, in, with, with, with speech and hearing impairment, it's not going to be possible. And that's when they, the use of total communication is, um, is brought in. The use of total communication, whereby is the application of the sign language and the oral communication, whereby the child can live, read you, look at your lips when you're teaching, and also look at the sign as well, signing in the course of the lesson. So that he can be able to know. So we were classifying um, um, methods, and we look at it in terms of oral teaching methods and the non-oral teaching methods. In the oral, there's going to be an application of the um, manual communication method to be able to allow for lessons to be also to for the those with hearing impairment to be part of the lesson. Now let's progress. What are the importance of teaching methods? What are the importance of teaching methods? If every effective teaching methods or learning styles have great impact on the students. Number one, it leads, it makes the students to be engaged in the learning process. If you have an effective teacher, it will bring the lesson to the level of the student and it will make the lesson, the students to be participatory in the lesson. Students will, there are topics, that are, there are methods that you do, and then the students will become actively, actively involved in the course of the lesson. Students will be excited, and by the time you ask one questions, the students are asking, answering the questions, and the students can also ask you questions. The students can also ask and continue to maybe carry out the practicals. Maybe the students will be able to bring, the, bring themselves into groups and be actively involved in collaboration with each other to be able to give, get an answer to a problem that you have brought or to pro produce a solution to an issue under consideration or to be actively involved in class activities. So if you have an effective teaching method, there is every indication that it will bring about student involvement, active student involvement in the learning process. It will also make them and it will also lead to avoidance of boredom in the class. It's a question where the students will just be sitting down and looking not interested. And some students will sit at the back and are not, they're not interested in what you're doing. So these are some of the things. If you have an effective teaching method, there's every indication that there's going to be avoidance of board. Three, it will give students a chance to practice. An effective teaching method helps students to practice what they've learned. It will allow them to reproduce what they've been taught. It will also help the students to remember what they've learned because they are actively involved in the course of the lesson. When students are becoming an integral part of the lesson process, they are going to be that is going to make them to remember whatever you're going to give it. It's informative or summative, whether it's internal examination or external examination, because of the fact that they were an integral part of the lesson process, there's every indication that the students will also be part of that. Now, the teaching methods will also engage students. The effective teaching methods engage students by providing them with interesting and relevant materials, which will make them to be part of the lesson. Also, I have talked about evaluation. An effective teaching method will provide feedback that is timely, specific, and useful. These are the things that will make you to know that your lesson had been achieved and the cause of it. And then in the, in the end, you will see that the objective of the lesson was achieved. Now let's look at this. I have talked about um, a number of things and I said that I would look at teaching methods. 
I'm not here to say, at least give you a list of all various categories of teaching methods, because um, teaching, there's so many teaching methods, over 20 something of them, over 20 of them. So every teaching methods are out there. So for example, starting from the lecture method, which the instructor presents materials and answering questions from the students will arise. Students will receive, take in and respond, just a lecture method. Demonstration method and so many other things are involved in lecture methods, but it's a teacher centered method. It's a teacher centered method. The teacher is the alpha, the omega, at the beginning and the end. He's the one that determines whatever happens. Then we have the interactive lecture. The interactive lecture is about a situation where between two to 15 minutes break for students' activities every 20 to 12, 20 seconds, 20 minutes. You will then do a break for students. Students will be involved in the course of the lesson. It is still a teacher centered. Uh, approach. Then we have the direct discussion. This is this is a class discussion that follows a predetermined set of questions and leads students to certain realization of, or conclusion. In 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 directed uh, discussion, already whatever questions that the teacher is asking, whatever materials that the teacher is presenting, already the teacher is tailoring the students towards the goals that he wants to achieve. Them, the, the, he's guiding the students and guiding them straight to what he has in mind. This is different from the direct instruction, which is a lecturing, but includes time for guided and independent uh, practices. And then we also got guided instructions. We also have uh, just in time teaching. Uh, let me explain what we might be just in time teaching. This is a, the special where the instructor adjust class activities and lectures to respond to the misconceptions revealed by assessing students' prior knowledge. This is, for example, you are teaching a particular topic as you are teaching, as you are teaching the lesson, as you are teaching the lesson, you ask a particular question, and then you realize that in the course of pre, maybe you're looking at um, uh, previous knowledge, you realize that a particular topic or not verse with the knowledge just go in to be able to explain the previous one, previous one or teach the previous ones or let the students to understand the previous before he gets to the lesson of the day this is just like the, just in time teaching you're 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 teaching the topic that you never had plans for but in the, you have to do that to be able to give the students an opportunity to understand so that they can be part of the lesson of the day now, these are all teacher-centered methods. There are student-centered methods where students are allowed opportunities in the course of the lesson. Everything about the lesson is on students. They are part, they, they, they're taking part in the demonstration. They're taking part in everything. You're, the, the students get, you're giving them previous knowledge. You give them everything about the lesson. So, and they are engaged in it. And then they continue, they are part of it. Now, having said all that, having said all that, we we'll get back to something. Conclusion of the lesson for today on how to choose a teaching method for your lesson. And also, so that you'll be able to know how to fill your multi teacher of the year form for 2022. Teaching methods that match students' learning styles and that put students' needs as the outcomes. So that's the better method of teaching students than having a better method from the student from the student and the teacher themselves. And let me also conclude by saying that there is no one topic or one uh, what should I say there's no one method that can save
there's no one method that fits it can never be the same. Teaching two, one teaching method cannot fit all. So if you if you have one teaching style for today, you cannot be say my teaching style every time has to be this. So for every lesson, don't expect to say that I'm using one method to be able to meet up with the students. As long as you have more than two or three students in the class, one method cannot fit all because of one age, two ability, three sex, four ability, five and uh, the, the, the uh, entry behavior and all the things. So you must be able to have a combination of topics uh, with methods that will be able to bring the lesson to the understanding of all the, the, of, the, of all the students in the class. So mixing and matching different teaching styles, simply re-evaluating your current on and also others will lead you to an effective teaching and objective achieved. I want to leave you with what William Arthur Ward had said, the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains. The spirit teacher demonstrates why the great teacher inspires. I pray that all the teachers will inspire their lesson. One important thing that I do mostly in my class is a form of new class, a class that every student, you come into the class, I allow you to have to be part of the and then take a part of the lesson. This form in the course of the lesson, everything counts, every teacher. Every teacher activity, every student in the class counts in the course of the lesson. So I want to, I want to um, inspire all the teachers out there. Take an opportunity and make your class a memorable one. Every time I get into class, I create an impact, an image in the an image in the minds of my students about the next lesson, so that they will be looking forward to what they are going to achieve next. Thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen. I believe that today has been a wonderful time. I believe that I've been able to do justice to some of the things that was expected of to do. But I want to also inspire all of us that if you've not been part of the winners of the multinational of the year, either at the state level or the national level, is an opportunity for you to go ahead right now and, um, and be part of it because multinational of the year 2022 is still up for grabs. Every teacher has an opportunity for that. Go online, register. Fill the forms. It's a very simple process to do. Why I say it's a very simple process to do is because it's a daily activity that we all do. Whatever is being asked there is what we do on a daily basis. They just want to be to see if exactly what is, is happening there is what we always do on a daily basis. So be able to be know for sure, I have been an inspiring teacher. I have been a good teacher. So once again, thank you so very much for being part of the session today. It's been a nice day. Thank you so very much. Now, let me hand you back to the studio. Uh, Delay and um, Daniel is standing by. Thank you so very much, Mr. Imo Essen. It's been a very, very um, inspiring session. And I believe all our teachers that are watching us online presently would have learned a thing or two about how they can express through the form express even when asked them anywhere what their teaching methodologies are um it's very very nice to have heard from you thank you very much mr Simon Essien. and just as you've said towards the concluding part of your presentation we want to encourage all teachers pan nigeria um said if you're a secondary school teacher we are encouraging you to apply to visit the website year, register and fill the form to become or to stand a chance, yes, to become the 2022 Teacher of the Year. It's a very rewarding opportunity. It's an opportunity where you get to be rewarded financially with up to 6.5 million Naira in cash price. And there are very more juicy rewards like trainings, um, and of course, a reward to the school where you teach um, with a block of classroom or a fully equipped laboratory. Um, I want to 
say thank you once again to Mr. Eamon Essay as we bring this session to a close. If you have any questions, teachers as well watching us, please drop them in the chat section or reply us uh, via Messenger or any of our social media platforms and we will do well to get back to you. Thank you very much once again. Stay tuned for the next edition of the Multinational Teacher of the Year Inspired Series brought to you by the Multinational Teacher of the Year. Thank you very much. Thank you.